welcome back uh, and now we are going to start a somewhat new topic we have already uh, i would say discussed the ricardian equivalence and we wanted to talk about that how and what happens when we have the borrowing constraint on the individuals when we have uh, certain individuals in the society and where they are not allowed to borrow in the open market with the given rate of interest and if there are any changes in the government stand for example if the government is going to change the taxation policy if there is some tax relief given in the budget then how the individuals are going to react so recording equivalence is a very powerful concept especially in the context when we are trying to understand that when you have given a scenario that uh, that there is a government and government is trying to enforce some kind of either the giving you incentive or it is having a some kind of of uh, a conditions under which it is increasing the tax how individuals are smoothly maintaining the consumption in both period 1 and period 2 so so a smooth transfer of a tax burden or any government burden and if it is as on is smoothly without compromising on consumption then we say that the recurrent equivalence hold and if it is not if it is not smooth then we say that recurrent equivalence does not hold now in a, a condition where we already looked at between two types of of consumers a and b but now we are trying to look at in a three period setup so we have done so far the one period model under that we examine the framework of consumption and leisure then we introduced the two period model and then in two period model we discussed the the behavior of consumption and saving how the representative agents are behaving with the certain scenarios when they are having increase in income current and future in this session we will be uh, having a different exposure to what we call it as the three period model so finite life scenario we are still not into the infinite we have already discussed the infinite utility we have already already derived the the infinite uh, lifetime budget constraint but here we will be looking at only in three period there will be overlap of one period so overlap of one period in the sense that if we are having a old if we divide the three period into a scenario where you have old and young and the young comes in period 2 when the old retires so how the smoothing is taking place so so far what we have done is that we have decided exogenously that if there is an increase in or decrease in taxes then how the individuals are going to react with their current and future consumption here we will be trying to decide endogenously which means that if we have these two generations one is old another is young now the young is coming in period 2 so so old is taking care the or sharing some burden of the young by transferring some amount of wealth so typical example could be that our parents when uh, when we are born our parents also talk uh, take care about us that uh, what will be the the livelihood scenarios in future how he will be doing some kind of financial safeguard they always have so some kind of benevolence we see that the olders will have uh, some kind of special care or inheritance Uh, uh given to the younger generation and this younger generation uses that for further consumption so we'll be trying to look at that here the reference uh, book remains same here we are referring uh, the benje hadra so unlike we so far we have so far referred to williamson but in this particular session we'll be referring benje hadra the foundations of modern macroeconomics it is third edition and it appeared in 2017 with its third edition so the book is really good and it gives you a sufficient mathematical i would say elaborations but yes if those of you who are not having a proper macroeconomics background then you can still try and read about these concepts in this particular book you just need the the understanding of calculus and uh, even the difference equation so that will be more than enough to understand but the underlying idea remains that we are trying to understand a situation where if you have the intergeneration wealth transfer happening from the older generation to young generation then how the exogenous shocks like a tax uh, increase or if you have the if you have a if if the younger generation is facing some kind of uncertainty how he can cope up 
but we will be looking at only from the perspective of tax increase because here we have the we have the Ricardian equivalence scenarios where we look at this smoothing of consumption of current and future. So, here this is what we are trying to understand and we can also call it three period consumption theory as the dynamic consumption theory uh, and we will be arriving, we will be also deriving the consumption function and we will be also looking at the uh, framework that we have discussed so far in terms of current and future consumption. For a given path of government spending, uh, th this is what we try to mention that if you have a uh, if you have a government expenditure which, which means that if government is, is going for government increasing the expenditure, it means that it will increase the taxes. If it is going to increase the taxes, then uh, he here it is assumed that the real consumption, investment, output and all the other factors are unaffected. So, the, the, this is one argument that most of the macroeconomists often mention. And here there is also argument that whether the government uses the tax uh, as an instrument or goes for debt for borrowing. In both scenarios, if a government is going for borrowing, then it also means that in future the tax scenarios are not going to be good, so individuals will be saving. So, in both scenarios you have the same reactions. So, that is what we say because if the government is going to have the government debt, suppose in the COVID scenario, if government is borrowing some amount of money from the external sources or from different sources, whatever burden that government is incurring now, it will allow the individuals to share in future whenever they will find it convenient time. So, you might be seeing that in some countries now the talk has started that that uh, you have the rolling back of the stimulus which means that the government when they, they decide about that now we are in a very comfortable situation and economy is doing good. Then in that situation the government will be rolling out all the fiscal stimulus, tax incentives and then which means that not enjoying the same benefit that you had but those benefits are, are being now transferred into the higher taxes or the rolling back of incentives. So, you may not be having the same scenario that you had earlier. So, here I am talking about. So, here you have the, the government which exists in all periods, right. So, here uh, we are saying that here in three period time. So, the here one, two and three periods that you have. Here you have the government. Old generation is, is entering here and old generation lives for only two periods. Young generation also lives in two periods. So, old generation comes here and dies here. Young generation comes here in this particular stage and the dies in this, this stage. So, beyond this we are not saying. So, what we are assuming that we want to see that if there is overlap of one generation here, which means that the old is also there and young is also there. During this period what happens that uh, will there be any kind of interaction happening? We, uh, we say that the old generation saving because now there is a possibility that the old generation can look beyond two period which the young generation is not allowed. So, this old generation whatever he is saves for future period he can still keep aside some amount of wealth that he has and pass it on to young in this period and young will be using that to smooth the consumption in both periods. So, this is the beautiful idea that how in real life scenarios we often see such things that when you when I, as I mentioned that when our parents also they are young they think about the younger generation which means that they will be saving some amount here that this saving will have the future value which means that some kind of extra income they will be getting. Then this income they will be using for their consumption, but some amount of buffer that they will have they will pass on to the younger generation. But here one thing is important that young generation cares about the old generation. So, young generation saves only when he is caring about the young generation. If the old generation does not care about the young generation, then this A to 0 will disappear. This is the amount that asset that this particular old generation is transferring to young generation as an extra, extra income you can say or extra asset or extra wealth and this young generation will be using this amount to smooth the consumption. So, you can think about that the old generation if you go back this side then you can think about that old generation will also have some amount of wealth starting 
and this wealth will be interest bearing and this wealth that this particular individual is having apart from income he also earns some kind of inheritance so it starts not with zero but some amount so this will be defining now so here in this case we are having the lifetime utility function in lifetime utility function this o subscript is nothing but representing the old generation so here we have v o right so instead of u we have written uh, v now here we have the log c10 which means that it is old so we can uh, call it as log c10 plus 1 upon 1 plus rho which means that it can be also written as beta because the rho designates the the value that how much uh, it has so this show the sensitivity for the time being if you do not want to write this as 1 upon 1 plus rho which mentions the preference over the future over current right or current over future so here it mentions the magnitude but so far what we have assumed is the beta here so let us keep that as beta here we have log c 2 o plus here we have alpha v y so here instead of if you want you can write it as u o and here we are writing as u y so here we can also mention at alpha v y this is the utility that individual is having and the coefficient attached shows the magnitude of benevolence that how much uh, the old is caring the young generation and alpha since it is the transfer of wealth so it has to be positive right it cannot be it cannot be zero uh, and it cannot be negative so the negativity constant is ruled out where the subscript o designates the old generation and y the young generation equation says that if alpha is greater than zero the old generation cares for the young generation this is what we mentioned about that is because they are related so maybe father and son uh, father and daughter so we are mentioning about these two things so here we have less so the utility function is quite straightforward the only thing is that we are adding one more component here otherwise it remains same log c1 o plus beta log c2 o plus alpha v y now we are mentioning about the lifetime budget constraint so here the lifetime budget constraint is look like this that in period 1 a10 this representative old household is having some asset right inherited asset and this is interest bearing so in period 1 it becomes 1 plus r o a 0 o plus 1 minus theta 1 here we have so here 1 minus theta 1 is the is the amount that this particular representative agent is having right so here it is the consumption that this particular representative uh, agent is facing so here it is y1 o minus c1 o here we have a2 o so here a2 o is nothing but here we have the value that he has saved so if he is saving some amount based on here which is here the way we are mentioning about he will be getting 1 plus r1 a1 o plus now he is having in period 2 so he can go for 1 minus theta 2 y2 o minus c2 o so this is the saving that we are mentioning about now if we since we have to derive the lifetime budget constraint so how do we derive this so we can just go for solving a0 or substituting a10 here and solve it so here we have c1 o plus c2 o so sometime i am mentioning 0 and o so please uh, do not get confused so here it is same so here it is a1 o is equal to 1 plus r o or you can say the period 0 that you have the rate of interest so here it is period 0 a 0 o plus 1 minus theta 1 that the amount that these individuals are saving and here we have a 2 o 1 plus r 1 a 1 o plus 1 minus theta 2 y 2 o minus c 2 o now here we have a 1 o from these expressions we can just solve it here so here if we get here we have the a 1 so if I substitute it here then still we can try and get the expression for the lifetime budget constant so here we have c 1 o plus c 2 o plus a 2 o upon 1 plus r 1 is equal to 1 plus r 0 a 0 o plus 1 minus theta 1 that we have here so it is coming here 
So, what it looks like that the budget constraint of this representative uh, agent who is old, he has the lifetime consumption of this which means that C 1 O plus C 2 O plus A 2 O that he is saving right his asset in period 2 it is nothing but 1 plus R 1. So, here it is coming in this way. So, here it is 1 upon R 1 is equal to 1 plus R 0 A 0 O this is the, the amount that he is inherited the asset he has inherited and on that he is having the extra additional value plus 1 minus theta 1 y 1 o plus 1 minus theta 2 y 2 o upon 1 plus r 1. So, this is the wealth that he is having right. So, the, the human wealth I would say the individual is having is h o and this we can represent by delta o. So, here it is a o 2 is the inheritance given to young at the end of period 2. So, here this is what when he dies he transfer this. But if he is not caring about anything then this may also be 0 because since he is caring about young generation. So, he is saving in the uh, in this uh, period 1 and that is what is being transferred to period 2. So, this period when he is not caring at all not benevolent or if do not see any bequest then it will be 0. So, bequest is important. So, here negative inheritance are not allowed. So, A 2 is greater than equal to 0. Now, here we are also mentioning at V y is equal to phi A 2 O and this, this phi A 2 O is important to understand from where it is coming right. So, let us go by the lifetime utility function. So, th this is what so we are done with old household. So, we will be arriving at this very soon that and this uh, can be represented by this. So, phi uh, we are not clear about from where phi is coming. So, we will be explaining that. But we have now walked out with the old old household now we will be walking with the young one how the young one is looking. Since we are not allowing young, young to think beyond third period which means that young is entering in period 2. So, uh, you, you can see here young is entering here right and now he is not allowed to think beyond this we are not allowing that. So, if he is going to this is the terminal period for the young then how we can see the reaction. So, here we have log C 2 y plus 1 upon 1 plus rho here we have log C 3 y. So, here we have a so the budget identities are what here we have A 2 y is equal to 1 minus theta 2 here we have the young generation saving in period 2. In period 3 when we have A y 3 which is the asset in period 3 is nothing but 1 plus R 2 that you get it here right plus he is also getting from the old generation in period 2 the transfer of wealth. So, it is added right and then in period 3 whatever is the income difference that he is has he has right. So, this amount and this amount has to be absorbed only in period 3. So, there is no point. So, maybe we can rule out this part but we can always have this beauty. The beauty of this is that this is not coming from the young generation it is coming from the old generation and this 8 O 2 will play very important role in smoothening the any kind of engineer shock coming from the government either increase in debt due to that you have the increase in taxes or direct increase in taxes. So, in that situation this particular individual will be using A O 2 as a cushion against any shock unexpected shock. We eliminate A Y 2 here and substitute it here ultimately what are we getting? Here we are getting C Y 2 plus C 3 Y upon 1 plus R 2 is equal to A O 2 this is what we he is getting and rest of the uh, values are same as old right only thing is that here we have period 2 and period 3 in case of old it was only period 1 and period 2. So, this H y is the human wealth of the young generation. Now, here if you just go about the solving for the consumption in both period for the young household. So, consumption for the both period for young household it will be the same that you will be driving at the other condition and then you will be solving it and after solving it you get this expression the bad constant that you have. 
Now here we have the younger generation. So, if you think about substituting it here that how does it if substituting it here the value of C 1 2 the value of C 2 y and C 3 y right. If I substitute it here then this is how it looks like right. And if you go by the equation of the benevolence then benevolence will be looking like this this is how we are solving it. Now, if I go for further solution then we can write this as this phi 0 is equal to this. Now, here we have 2 plus rho this is what we have it is equal to 1 plus rho. Then here we have log a o 2 plus h y right. So, log a o 2 here it is coming right. So, plus h y so human wealth that we have right is equal to phi a o 2 and this phi a o 2 that we had mentioned here it is nothing but we are getting this expression. Now, the if you want you can also solve for the marginal utility. So, marginal utility of this will be with respect to a o 2 whatever is the amount being transferred from old to young. If you want to see that how much is the change of utility of the young generation with respect to the the benevolence or the transfer of wealth from old to young. Then after the differentiation of this it becomes this 2 plus rho upon 1 plus rho a o 2 plus h y which means that the preference of the future this is what we have the rho which means that the denominator term the a o 2 is still visible and this will create a, a problem if it is increase if it increases. So, the marginal change that we are seeing we are seeing that the a o 2 is still playing very important role. Now, if you think about if given this situation that the young is having so we have examined young in more detailed way. So, we stopped just here by putting the budget line of the old. Now, we are seeing that how are the situations under which the old is allowed to think about the young generation. So, the old household knows the relationship between this this is what v y is equal to phi a o 2 and takes into account the is so takes into account in the consumption pattern. So, in period 1 this particular individual thinks that this phi a o 2 is playing very important role. So, he will always have preference high for the future to save more so that in period 2 he can transfer some more amount to the younger generation. So, the old household chooses C 1 O, C 2 O and A O 2 to maximize the lifetime utility subject to the bias current which means that A O 2 is now inherently indigenously part of the old generation because he is thinking to maximize C 1 O, C, C 2 O and A 2 O all three because he knows that this amount must be transferred to the younger generation because he cares a lot. So, in the equation we can write this way. So, log C 1 O plus 1 upon 1 plus rho log C 2 O which you can also write as beta. Here you have alpha phi A 2 O because here we have mentioned that V y is equal to phi A 2 O. So, here we are using this separate expression right plus here we have the lambda. So, this is the, the budget constraint that we are facing. So, we can write it this in this way for the old. Now, if you go by the express, uh, differentiation. So, since we are looking at this household is going to choose C O 1, C O 2 and A O 2. So, we will have to now differentiate with respect to all this C O 1, C O 2 and uh, A O 2. So, this is what we are trying to say. So, del L upon D del C 1 O is equal to 1 upon C 1 O minus lambda is equal to 0 and del L upon del C O 2 is equal to 1 upon 1 plus rho. So, if you just go for the partial differentiation. What is more important is this alpha D Y V Y upon D A O 2 minus lambda 1 plus R 1. So, if alpha is equal to 0 which means that no love for the younger generation the old generation is not caring at all about the younger generation this particular expression will be 0 and you are left with upon uh, lambda upon 1 plus r. If the individual is caring about then only this marginal change will play a very important role and this we derived 
the value will drive here. So, this, this is what we try to say that the marginal benefit that we have AB to the old leaving one additional unit of output to the young in the form of additional inheritance. The marginal cost of leaving the additional unit of output to the young instead of consuming. So, this uh, is what is important here. So, as I mentioned that if alpha is equal to 0, then it becomes minus delta 1 upon R 1 and this we call it as the operative uh, bequest where we say that the older generation is taking care about the younger generation. And I hope with this three period understanding, I would say three period dynamic consumption model, we are able to see that the Ricardian equivalence holds here because this A O 2 is, is acting like a grease or acting like a smoothing function for the uh, younger generation. So, old generation whatever he has because he is thinking at the same time C 1 O, C 2 O and A 2 O. So, which means that the amount that has been transferred from the old to young, young is using this A 2 O to smooth out the consumption of current and future and this makes the analysis interesting to understand. So, this is what we try and understand with non-operative uh, bequest motive alpha is equal to 2 low R E T fails. If, if A O 2 is positive which means that if the transfer is positive then R E T holds and this is what we try to understand. So, and then your know, theta 1, theta 3 you can bring in the dimensions of the uh, government, the tax change. So, those things are always a part of, but one of the most important uh, I would say contributions of this particular uh, session is that you can understand the transfer of the wealth, intergenerational transfer does matter for the Ricardian equivalence and when we have intergenerational transfer then the Ricardian equivalence holds. Otherwise, if the old generation is not caring about the young generation, if you do not have the, if you do not have the intergenerational transfer of wealth, then of course, your uh, Ricardian experiment will fail and we will not have the, the cooperative, uh, I would say the benevolence, cooperative benevolence is important. So, sometime in the economy, so, rich individuals do not care about the, uh, care so much about the taxation because they are already having lot of, I would say, cautioning. Whereas, for the older generation, it matters, uh, for the poor, it matters a lot because for them, some kind of relief measures must be given. So, those things will be uh, talking about uh, now and we will be looking at the credit market asymmetry in the next session and this this particular uh, topic will be discussing that when we have different borrowing and lending rates then how the consumer is going to think about either maximizing current consumption or future consumption. So, current and future consumption frameworks uh, will allow you to understand the credit market asymmetry. So, I am stopping it here. I hope this, this session was useful to all of you, maybe a new uh, topic to be discussed, but yes, you can think about now how we in macroeconomics certain intergenerational transfers are taken care and with that we try to maximize the utility of both the overlapping and the old and young. Thank you. Thank you so much.